this scene here, you know, I've lived here for 30 years, and I, I love this place. I really do. Of course, it's ever been, you know, it wasn't built with this Japanese subway. <laughs> All that, that had to be brought in. Uh, and, and, and as I look at it, I realize that it's such a contrast to how I grew up as a kid. <laughs> because I grew up in the middle of the Great Depression. Uh, I grew up on the streets of New York and had, had to really, really make, make my way. And, and the contrast was, was really remarkable. But the thing that saved us, we never thought we were poor. We never thought we were poor because everybody around us was in the same circumstance. My mother was a remarkable woman with a wonderful sense of humor. College was never even a, a consideration on my part. It, it wasn't that I looked down on it, but I, I, I never thought not only could I not afford to go, but I had to contribute to the to the family livelihood. And that was that was all part of it. We sat, we sat around the table one day and my mother said, you know what? You ought to go to a trade school so I'll know what kind of work you're out of. <laughs> and, and, and this is the kind of humor. It's self-effacing. Uh, it sort of dulls any, any, any mishap. It, it makes you, it somehow or other made me feel good that, that we could attack this with, with the humor thing. Throughout my experiences in, in my business, which we started in 1953, uh, I've always had pens made because it was an integral part of the business. And when I traveled, I had them imprinted many thanks in the language of the country, in fact, Jack Nadel. So, I mean, Italy, it was Billy Grazzi, Jack Nadel. In France, it was Merci beaucoup, Jack Nadel. So we went to Japan. I went to the imprint department, which was uh, supervised by a Japanese lady, and I said, look, I'd like to have this say in Japanese, many thanks, Jack Nadel. Nice pen, very good looking, and so on. I think it cost me at least a quarter. <laughs> it, was really, it was really very impressive. <clears throat> and I could not believe the, the response to it. I mean, uh, like, like I'd given the Taj Mahal, and, and I, I couldn't figure it out because the response was overwhelming when I gave this pen as a gift. So finally I asked the stewardess on one of the Japan airline trips, I said, would you kindly tell me what this says because it's <laughs> Japanese. And she said, a little gift, but from the heart. I'll jack me that. And uh, I think that was the start of a thinking process of what really happened in Japan. I had fought the Japanese. Uh, it couldn't have been a more vicious war. We could not have been bigger enemies. We could not have hated each other much more. But when I came back with Ali in 1957, and we spent three months on a deal that I had made for Japanese merchandise, and got into the really into the flow and we realized that it was not it was unlike any other country we had visited uh, everybody else had a common culture and so on but the japanese were like going on another planet and and there i learned the meaning of of of, of the word shibui with shibui there's one of these words that there really isn't a, a proper english translation for it Ostensibly, it's peace, a feeling of shibui, but it's more than that. It's a, peace, it's a feeling of tranquility, it's a feeling of, of goodness, it's a feeling of, of loving, compassion, and so on. That's shibui, and I began to understand that. And this tradition of Japanese gift giving is something that existed over, over the course of time, and, and that's what that's what introduced them. So uh, I, I, I really felt it was starting, it was in, I didn't know it. Just like many things I think of today at 90. And I look back and I say, why did I do that? What was I thinking of? And I, and I do it, try, uh, hopefully in a constructive way. 
And, uh, you know, Shakespeare says, uh, the evil that men do lives after them, the good is oft interred with their bones. And uh, I said, I, I don't want, they, I want uh, a perpetual record, and the best way I could do that is to write, is to say something, is to tell people how I believe so that my grandchildren can someday read it and know what I was trying to do. So the, the, what you say often is forgotten, but what you write is, is there, you know, and, and it's there for, for a long time, and, and uh, depending on how good it is. And, and my goal is really to pass it on, because that's part of what you think of at 90. I've been fortunate. The only thing that's left is to say, what do you leave? What is your legacy? What what goes after you? What goes when you're gone? When you no longer have a voice? When you no longer speak? And and that's why, and that's why I've said that I, I feel <clears throat> that each book I write has something that the other books haven't had, because I've had another year, another two years, another five years of evolutionary process, and I've gotten feedback. On it. And I know that we have a lot of problems here, in my opinion, and in everybody's opinion, it would be solved much better if there were more people in business, doing business, manufacturing more products and creating a better economy. So this is really in, in, in outline what I do. So I come back and, and one of the, my feelings has always been that be as independent as you can. Be able to, to, to take a blow and get up and, and you know, someone said, I certainly didn't originate it, that it's not how you go down, it's how you get up. And, uh, and, and I have felt that. When I went on this uh, uh, mission, this trade mission to Japan, uh, I was appoint, appointed by President Ronald Reagan. I don't to this day know how he found me. I, I wasn't a Republican. <laughs> I didn't know, but he did. It was one of the great experiences of my life. And I sat with uh, the best people, the really wonderful people. And one of the conversations I never got was with the uh, president of Mitsubishi and the president of Sony. And I said something about making a deal. And the president of Mitsubishi said, uh, you know, that's the problem we have. You Americans come and you want to make a deal. We, Japanese, want to establish a relationship. And from the relationship comes whatever it comes. And I realized that it's not only for business, it's for your entire life. Everything you do is built on relationships. And this is, this is, this is what I felt. So to you and to my family and to my friends and to everybody gathered here, I'll never forget this. I don't think I know how long I have to remember it, but <laughs> I will never forget it. <laughs>